Well, suppose we go the route of postulating some causal agency beyond space and time as being responsible for the origin of the universe. A conceptual analysis of what properties must be possessed by such an ultra-mundane cause enables us to recover a striking number of the traditional divine attributes. For as the cause of space and time, this entity must transcend space and time, and therefore exist atemporally and non-spatially, at least sans the universe. This transcendent cause must therefore be changeless and immaterial, since timelessness entails changelessness, and changelessness implies immateriality. Such a cause must be beginningless and uncaused, at least in the sense of lacking any antecedent causal conditions. Occam's razor will shave away further causes since we should not multiply causes beyond necessity. This entity must, moreover, be unimaginably powerful, since it created the universe out of nothing. Finally, and most strikingly, such a transcendent cause is plausibly to be regarded as personal. As Richard Swinburne points out, there are two types of causal explanation. Scientific explanations in terms of laws and initial conditions and personal explanations in terms of agents and their volitions. A first state of the universe cannot have a scientific explanation since there is nothing before it, and therefore it can be accounted for only in terms of a personal explanation. Moreover, the personhood of the cause of the universe is implied by its timelessness and immateriality since the only entities we know of which can possess such properties are either minds or abstract objects. And abstract objects like numbers and relations and properties do not stand in causal relations. Therefore, the transcendent cause of the origin of the universe must be of the order of mind. This same conclusion is also implied by the origin of a temporal effect from a timeless cause. For if the cause of the universe were an impersonal set of necessary and sufficient conditions, it could not exist without its effect. Otherwise, it wouldn't be truly sufficient for the effect. The only way for the cause to be timeless and changeless, but for its effect to originate de novo a finite time ago, is for the cause to be a personal agent who freely chooses to bring about an effect in time without any antecedent determining conditions. And thus we are brought not merely to a transcendent cause of the universe, but to its personal creator. We can summarize the argument this evening as follows. Number one, whatever exists has a reason for its existence, either in the necessity of its own nature or else in an external ground. Two, whatever begins to exist is not necessary in its existence. Three, if the universe has an external ground of its existence, then there exists a personal creator of the universe who, sans the universe, is timeless, spaceless, beginningless, changeless, necessary, uncaused, and enormously powerful. Four, the universe began to exist. Five, therefore, the universe is not necessary in its existence. That follows from step two and step four. Whatever begins to exist is not necessary in its existence. The universe began to exist. Therefore, the universe is not necessary in its existence. Six, therefore, the universe has an external ground of its existence. That follows from one and five, whatever exists has a reason for its existence, either in the necessity of its own nature or in an external ground. The universe is not necessary in its existence. Therefore, the universe has an external ground of its existence. And finally, seven, therefore, there exists a personal creator of the universe who sounds the universe is timeless, spaceless, beginningless, changeless, necessary, uncaused, and enormously powerful. And this as Thomas Aquinas was wont to remark, is what everybody means by God.